सदाशिवसंभां शंकराचार्य मध्यमा अस्मदाचार्यपर्यता वंदे गुरुपरंपरा ओम सहना सहनौ विन सह वीरवाहे तेजस्वीनाधीतमस्तु मृषावे ओम शातिशाति ओं पाथय प्रतिबोधिता भगवता नारायण स्वयं व्यासेन पुराणम विना मध्ये महाभारत अद्वैतामृतवर्षिणी भगवती अष्टादशाध्यायिनी अंबत्वामुसंदा भगवदीते यम ब्रह्मा वरुणेन्द्र रुद्रमृत सुन्वती दिव्यस्तव वेद सांगपदक्रमोपनिषद गायती सामतावस्थितगते मनसा पश्य यम योगिना विदुसुरासुरगणा देवाय तस्म अथ चतुर्थोध्याय श्रीभगवाच नमा कर्मा लिंपते नमे कर्म फले स्पृहा कर्म भिर्न सबध्यते एवं ज्ञात्वा कृतम कर्म पूर्वरपि मुक्षु पूर्व पूर्वतर किंकर्म किम कर्मे कवयोप्यत्र मोहिता तत्ते कर्म प्रवक्षा यज्ञात्वा मोक्षसे शुभा कर्मण ह्यपि बोधव्यम बोधव्यम चकर्मण अकर्मण बोधव्यम गहना कर्मणो गति सो आप वी आर मीटिंग आफ्टर टू मंथ्स एंड सम ऑफ यू आर न्यू सो वी आर सीइंग द फोर्थ चैप्टर भगवत गीता हैज गॉट एटीन चैप्टर्स दैट टू आई थिंक ऑल ऑफ यू नो एंड फर्स्ट चैप्टर is providing the background for the teaching given by shri krishna that chapter is called arjuna vishad yoga the chapter dealing with the sorrow of arjuna the sorrow is because of the attachment to the relatives and because of the sorrow and the attachment there is moha there is a delusion seeing things upside down seeing things wrongly what is right is considered to be wrong and what is wrong is considered to be right that is called moha ulta in hindi there is an ulta the seeing things ulta and arjuna discovered that he has this problem not only now but earlier also 
and therefore he wants to solve this problem more fundamentally and therefore he requested bhagwan to enlighten him maybe you can open somebody <laughs> Please sit wherever you find space. Yeah, some people can come in front as well. Yes. All right. Namaskaram you can do afterwards. You can please take your seats. So is there anybody coming? No, nobody is there. One more is there. So we... Yeah, you can just leave it little ajar. So Arjuna requested Bhagavan to give him knowledge so that he is free from this delusion, confusion. And Bhagavan started giving the Upadesha from the 11th shloka of the second chapter, which is called Sankhya Yoga. And Sankhya Yoga is brief presentation of the entire Bhagavad Gita. If you have studied Sankhya Yoga well, it gives more or less the entire picture of Bhagavad Gita. Of course, this Ishvara Nirupanam is less, but it gives the vision of Vedanta in general. So, Bhagavan talked about Jnanam, Atmic Jnanam as the solution. He gave Atmic Jnanam, and for Atmic Jnanam, purity of the mind required for that Karma Yoga, which includes Upasana Yoga, also was talked about. And then he talked about what are the characteristics of a wise person? Sita Pragna Lakshanani. Then in the third chapter, the topic of Karma Yoga, doing action with proper attitude was elaborated. And then, having completed the teaching on the third chapter, in the third chapter, in the fourth chapter beginning, Bhagavan glorified the teaching by saying, Hey Arjuna, I am giving you the same teaching which was given by me to Surya Devata. So it is the same Vedic teaching is now given to you. Then Arjuna had a question that how is it possible that you were born just now, then how you can give teaching in the beginning of creation? For that, Bhagavan answered that Arjuna, you have taken so many births, I also have taken so many avatars, only difference I know and you do know. And then he talked about the purpose of avatara, the nature of avatara, the basis for avatara. And then from the ninth shloka, he started talking about the result of avatara jnanam. And he came to the topic of jnana yoga. And some miscellaneous topic he talked about like chatur varnyam, the social classification based on the action and the qualities. And then Bhagavan introduced the topic, the main topic, and that is called the topic of Vidvat Karma Sanyasa. Renunciation of action through knowledge. And introduced in the 16th shloka by saying, Hey Arjuna, Kim Karma Kim Akarmeti, what is action, what is inaction? With regard to that, people are confused. And I will talk to you about that karma and a karma, knowing which you will be free from samsara. Our bondage is because of not knowing the place of karma, action. Based on action, I consider myself to be superior or inferior. If you have gone to Kailas, 
then you say, I have gone to Kailas. You have some superiority complex. And other person who is hearing will have inferiority. Oh, I have not gone. I tried and tried, but when I tried, only COVID came. So, <laughs> <laughs> many people have this reason. Swamiji, I was about to go, COVID came. <laughs> so, inferiority. Based on doing and not doing, a person can have complex. And more often, this karma creates the feeling of guilt. You always feel that I could have done better, I could have done better. So, this guilt remains. However good you do, you always feel you could have done better. And people around also will tell you, especially in Indian setup, the child is growing, child is getting 85, 90, 92, still parents will say, next time do better. Next time do better. So, child is always made to feel that he is not enough. So, he grows with that sense that I am not enough. And that continues. So, when I do not know the place of karma properly, then karma creates complexes, karma creates guilt. And since karma is there, action is there, karma phalam will be there. And so, result of karma creates hurt. Sometimes elation, sometimes depression. And therefore, if I know the place of karma properly, I will be free from this bondage of guilt and hurt. Superiority and inferiority. Therefore, Bhagavan says, I will talk to you about karma and akarma. In Bhagavad Gita, nothing is talked about just for academic purpose. Everything is talked about which is directly or indirectly connected to your life. Bhagavad Gita is not a, is a PhD subject. Bhagavad Gita is something to be studied for your life. It is a life science in a, in a way. Generally life science has got different meaning in science. But life science in the sense it is collected, is connected to your life. People generally think that Bhagavad Gita is to be studied when you grow old. Or when person is dying, you read Bhagavad Gita. Isn't it? South India also it is there. That person is dying, we read Bhagavad Gita. I have read one uh, just so by elderly person in the family when she was dying. So I remember I wrote, read Bhagavad Gita. That time perhaps Sanskrit I did not read, I read translation, Gujarati translation. So we generally think that Bhagavad Gita is meant for a dying person. No? And some people say not dying, but some is the old people. Bhagavad Gita is meant for old people. Means those who are good for nothing. <laughs> they, can, <laughs> they cannot do anything else. In fact, they try to do something, it will be an interference. So it is better they go to Bhagavad Gita class. <laughs> so generally people have that type of perception that Bhagavad Gita is to be studied in old age. It's not true. Bhagavad Gita is to be studied to know how to live your life. In young age itself, we should study. Not at a, the age of uh, 5, 6, 7, 8, not that. But when you are becoming adult, 18, 19, etc., you, you need to at least know the, the important topics of Bhagavad Gita. And therefore, Bhagavan says, Arjuna, I will tell you which will make you free from samsara. And Somebody may say, what is there in knowing karma and akarma? So, Bhagavan says, karmanaha api tattvam bodhavyam. The true nature of karma is to be understood. True nature of vikarma, prohibited action also is to be understood. True nature of inaction also is to be understood. Why? Gahana karbano gatihi. The nature of karma is very, very subtle. See, we cannot make a judgment based on the superficial appearance of action. It is something like a doctor is bleeding the patient. He is putting a cut and a lot of bleeding is there. Now, is he doing pundiyam or papa? Maybe doing pundiyam also? Because he is healthy. And he is unnecessary, he is putting a cut. Without uh, thinking too much about it, you just put a cut. Bring papa. So, based on action, you cannot say. 
Suppose these politicians are distributing this money during the election time. Are they doing punyam? So just because somebody is giving money, you cannot say one who is doing money is punyam and one who is bleeding, the uh, causing bleeding is doing papa. You cannot pay. Thus, karmana gati is very gahana. Somebody is is sitting in meditation and you look that this person is not having any action but that person may be planning for the action so mentally he is very active whereas this wise person we are going to talk about even amidst the activity is free from action and therefore what is action and what is inaction it is not easy to understand we superficially make the comments. We have got some uh, basis for judgment. We make judgment. This person is highly rajasic. This person is highly tamasic. This person is highly sattvic, etc. So, Bhagavan says, don't go superficially. There is lot of depth involved. And therefore, I will talk about it. Having given this introduction, now in the next shloka, 18th shloka, Bhagavan talks about this karma and akarma in a very very mysterious way in a very subtle manner in the next shloka karmanya karma yah pashet akarmani cha karma yah sabuddhiman manushyeshu sayukta krishna karma krit Karmani akarma yah pashyet, akarmani cha karma yah pashyet, saha buddhiman manushyeshu sayuktaha krishna karma krit. So this shloka is a naughty shloka, naughty means k n o double t y, that naughty, not n o u g t y, that naughty. There is some naught is there. In Sanskrit it is called grantha granthi. Means this shloka is, if you go by mere translation, it doesn't seem to convey any sensible thing. If you read the translation, what will the translation? Yaha, one who, pashe, one who would see in action, a karma, in action, karmani. So, one who sees, perceives, in action, in action, and Akarmani cha karmaha, an action in inaction. So he is seeing what? Inaction in action and action in inaction. Saha buddhiman, that person is buddhiman, he is very intelligent. Manushyeshu among all human beings. Sa yuktaha, he is a great yogi. And Krista karmakrit, he has done all karmas, he is a person of fulfillment. See if you read mere translation, it really doesn't seem to convey. It says what? When an action is there, he is seeing inaction. When inaction is there, he is seeing action. It is something like Duryodhana in Mahabharata. Where water is there, he was seeing ground. Where ground is there, he is seeing water. It is a delusion. Where this wall is there, you don't see wall. The wall is, <laughs> wall is not there, you are seeing the wall. Then it is what? Is some ophthalmological problem, eye problem. It's not a greatness, but he says one who is seeing action in inaction, in action in action is great intelligent person. So this shloka, if we read superficially, it is either does not communicate anything or it confuses us. Therefore, thanks to the commentaries of the Acharyas, they explain. To understand this shloka, we have to understand certain fundamental principles which are implied and this a, to be used to understand the shloka. The first one is every individual who is referred to by the word I. How do you refer yourself? I. I went there. I am coming. So that I which you are aware of, which is evident, that I is a combination of self and non-self. 
in the vision of Vedanta, this I is a combination of self. Self means what really you are. Non-self means what you really are not. So this I is a combination. Atma and Anatma. Atma means what really you are. Anatma means what you are not but you think yourself to be. That is the first principle. And this Atma Anatma which are mixed up and appearing as a single entity called Ahankara I that is to be separated by Atma Anatma Viveka by this cognitive separation of the self and non-self using the principle whatever I am aware of I am different from that. I am aware of this book I am different from the book no problem. But I am aware of the body as well and therefore I am different from the body. People may say, Swamiji, I am not feeling that I am different from the body. Remember, the different from the body, Atma, I is different from the body, is not physical different. Is not physical difference or it is not physical distance we are talking. We are not saying that you see yourself, you lift yourself and come out of this body and see how so you are different. Astral travelling they call it. We are not talking about that. We are talking about the cognitive difference between the body and me. The nature is different. Body is inert. I am the knowing principle, illumining principle. Therefore, I am different. Like space and this object, they are not space-wise different. It is not that space is away from this clip. But the nature of space and the nature of clip different. So space can appreciate, I am different from clip. Even though there is no physical distance between the space and the clip, but still space can appreciate. Similarly, I am different from the body because body is drishyam, the object of knowledge. I am the one who is knowing the body. I am the knower, body is known. Similarly, sense organs I know, mind also I know. Therefore, I am different from the mind. Do you know your mind or not? Do you illumine your mind or not? In your mind, sometimes anger is there. But outside you are making a very nice question. Nice gesture, you know, some unwanted guest comes and therefore they say, am I disturbing you? No, 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 no. Inside you say, yeah, you are disturbing only. <laughs> Why did you come this time? It is a time for watching cricket match. And you, have <laughs> you are disturbing us. But outside you say, what? No, no, it's no problem, no problem. Please come. But inside you know there is anger. It means you are someone who is aware of your mind. We are talking this particular Viveka in a very palatable manner. Really speaking, I am someone who is illumining all the thoughts of the mind. So, I am Sakshi, the illuminator of the mind and through the mind I am illuminator of the body, senses and all the objects in the world. Then the next lesson is that this anatma, body, mind, sense complex or even the external world consisting of matter, this material anatma is never free from action. Body cannot be completely from, free from action. Something or the other will be happening in the body. Even in the external world, if you see at atomic level, there is a movement. Electrons are moving around the nucleus and even cosmic level this our planets are moving around the sun and our the sun also is moving around the center of galaxy and our galaxies are also moving around the center of universe they say. Therefore anatma can never be free from action. Something or the other will be happening. And Atma, the self which is of the nature of consciousness is ever free from action. 
So the two important principles of Vedanta that non-self in the form of body, mind, sense complex is never completely free from action and Atma is ever free from action. Why Atma is ever free from action? Because Atma, consciousness is free from modification. Since it is free from modification, change and without change action is not possible. Therefore, I, consciousness am free from modification and thereby free from action. So, this is the idea conveyed here that the self is ever free from action. Consciousness is ever free from action. Body, mind, sense complex is never free from action. And therefore, if you want to be completely free from action, then what is to be done? Physically, you can never be completely free from action. Even if you say, no, I will not do anything, I will sit quietly. Then also Vedanta says, when you are doing that, no, like this, I will not do anything. Even if somebody calls me, I will not speak to him. So, according to Vedanta, that time also you are acting. Why? Because you have this sankalpa. I will keep silence. I will not talk to anybody. According to Vedanta, any state which is characterized by this abhimana, identification, I am doing or not doing, it is called action. So, even if you are withdrawing, then also it is action. So, physically you can never renounce all actions. If you want to be free from action, only way is you shift your identity from the non-self to the self. And non-self is non-self. You are not that. You thought yourself to be that. So now you disidentify from anatma, which you had identified with, identified with earlier, and now you see yourself to be consciousness. I am consciousness, and I consciousness am ever free from action. Even when the body mind sense complex is active, I consciousness am ever free from action. And this type of freedom from action through knowledge is called Vidvat Karma Sanyasa or Vidvat Sanyasa. Renunciation of action through knowledge is called Vidvat Sanyasa, otherwise called Gnana Karma Sanyasa. The chapter is titled as Gnana Karma Sanyasa, means renunciation of action through knowledge. And what is the advantage, Swamiji? Activities will happen. But you, when you appreciate yourself to be actionless, then you do not have any sense of guilt. What is your appreciation? In the body-mind-sense complex, activities are happening. I am the witness of this body-mind-sense complex, which is doing activities. So you are completely objective about all the activities of the body. All the activities of the organs, even all the activities of the mind. People, especially the sincere spiritual seekers, they have got one problem. What that's to Swamiji, my mind is thinking all negative thoughts. Which is Swamiji is to say, stop calling any thought as a negative thought. Don't call any thought negative thought. It is just a thought. Why are you branding any thought to be a negative thought? It's a thought. By branding is negative thought, you are creating a conflict in you. You are creating a guilt in you. It's a thought. Don't call it as a negative. It's a thought. First of all, you call it thought. And any thought has a background. No thought comes without background. The type of thought this person gets, other person doesn't get it this time. Why? Because this person's background is different, that person's background is different. Some person will be thinking about the Sambar Sadam. <laughs> some, <laughs> some people will be thinking of Dakshina Murti. Thoughts, depending upon the background, 
somebody says, Swamiji, this ashram, Sambar Sadam is very good. So you will think about that only. And somebody is thinking about what? Your Dakshnamurti Vidra is so beautiful. You feel like seeing, you feel like seeing. So you will think about that. So depending upon the background, thoughts will be there. Vedanta says what? Finally, you able, you see this fact. I am the witness of these thoughts. I am not thinker. I am the witness of these thoughts. Don't identify yourself with the mind and say I am thinker. You say I am the witness of the thoughts of the mind. And when you see yourself to be witness, then you do not have any guilt. Why am I having bad thoughts? Negative thoughts. Don't call any thought bad thought or negative thought. It's a thought. And try to be objective. First objectivity is this thought has a background. This is first objectivity. A person thinks in a particular manner because of particular background. Second objectivity is I am the Sakshi of this thought. So two level objectivity. Initially this objectivity that are thoughts and they have background. Like if you have eaten the eaten food, then digestion will be happening and sometimes grrr, sound also will come. That's how it is. Yeah. It is because you have eaten food and some type of food you have eaten which creates some gas, it happens. So first objectivity, thoughts are because of their background. And second is, I am Sakshi of these thoughts. I am free from thoughts. I am free from all activities happening in the mind happening in the body, happening in the senses. And this is called Vidvat Karma Sanyasa. And this is the ultimate Sanyasa. People taking these orange clothes, that is not ultimate Sanyasa. Ultimate Sanyasa is seeing yourself to be free from all actions all the time. When you take formal Sanyasa, you renounce only some activities. You don't do Sandhya Mandanam, you don't do Agdi Hotra or some other karmas. But you will be doing other activities. So, formal sannyasi is not a complete sannyasa. Complete sannyasa is only by the wisdom. I am Atma ever free from action. So, this Vidva sannyasa is talked about. If you want to be free from action, disidentify from an Atma. And own up yourself to be Atma, which is consciousness. And see this fact, I am ever free from action. This is the message given here. Now, with this background, we can understand this shloka. Yaha, one who, a wise person, referring, by, referred to by the word Yaha, one who, Pashe, one who would see, what a karma, actionlessness of the self. When? Karmani emits the activities at the level of the body, mind, sense complex. When activities are happening in the body, that time also he appreciates what? I, self, am actionless. Like pot is moving. That time also space can appreciate that this pot is moving. I, space, am motionless. Because in space there is no motion. So one appreciates actionlessness amidst the activities happening at the level of body, mind, sense complex. And akarmani cha karmaya. And at the level of anatma, even when there is inaction, no action seems to be there in the body, mind, sense complex. Person is sitting quietly. There also the wise person sees karma, action, potential action is there. Or at some level, action is there. Abhimana of not doing action is there. You might have heard this story that four disciples were told by the master that all of you observe silence. So all of them were seated and maybe on the bank of a river or, a, or the sea. They were observing sunset. And then some passerby asked, what is time now? So they were asked, all four of them were asked no, to keep silence till they come back to the ashram. So 
first one person could not remain and what he said i'm sorry i cannot speak because i am in silence <laughs> so there is answer he gave second one said but you spoke no he also spoke third one says both of you spoke it is wrong i will tell the master and the fourth one says with a great air of superiority what i am the only one who maintains silence <laughs> that we spoke you know. <laughs> so even if you are maintaining silence you have the abhimana of not talking and that is a subtle level of action it is a subtle type of action so what bhagwan sri krishna wants to highlight is anatma can never be free from action either it has got this action at gross level or subtle level either it is present or potential but anatma can never be free therefore if you run away from the world if you run away from action thinking that i don't want to do any duty i'll keep quiet that is not in action because you will be fuming that you went to rishikesh and nobody called also that, that, that person he goes to rishikesh any things that people will call and people don't call i have come back i have run away from the world nobody notices me i will not go i will not go but he wants to go but only if he is called he wants to go so this type of state is not real sanyasa people have some people have got great craze for sanyasa that he some all my problems should be solved when i take sanyasa this person doesn't know he expect new problems will start when he takes sanyasa sanyasa as a stage of life is not the solution to all problems the problems which sanyasi has grihasthas don't have especially in the traditional setup sanyasi is supposed to live on his own he is not supposed to ask for any financial help he is not supposed to keep money now all this if he follows sanyasa is a big kashtam and sometimes there is a desire to eat something do something and then he will have social restriction nowadays sanyasis are not following that but traditionally certain things they cannot do and therefore sanyasi have got their own conflicts if they are not mature sanyasa has got his own conflict grihasthas have got their own problems so no particular stage of life is a guarantee to this problems no particular lifestyle is a solution to all problems so when you are a grihastha and you have so many problems you will have so many problems as a sanyasi also so the particular ashram doesn't solve so here it is said just by physically withdrawing from the action you are not becoming free from action real freedom from action comes by this understanding that i am a karta even when the talking is happening i am talking less i am silent so my silence is not now my silence is forever one who has this understanding sah buddhiman that person is very intelligent he has used his buddhi correctly bhagwan has given us buddhi to finally understand this atma in its true nature but what we do we use buddhi for all other things and the main purpose for which buddhi is given we don't use it is generally i give the example person goes from the ashram to the city for what for buying medicine he tells reason to go to buy medicine he goes to the city he watches movie he goes to annapurna annapurna no here annapurna and has masala dosa everything he does and he comes back then person asks did you go buy medicine oh that type of <laughs> so that's what person does everything in his human life but he does not use buddhi for which buddhi is primarily given and therefore this person is called buddhiman means he has used his buddhi very well he is very intelligent 
एंड मनुष्य ऑल ह्यूमन बींग्स स युक्त ही इज इंटीग्रेटेड पर्सन ही हेज डन ऑल द साधना विथ सक्सेस सो युक्त इंडिकेट्स आइडिया ही इज ए सक्सेसफुल साधक He has done all his sadhana of karma yoga, upasana, shravan, madana, nididhyasanam, all of them successfully. And kar krishna karma krit, he has done all the karmas to be done. Means all the karmas are meant for finally discovery of limitless self, and that he has done. And another way of saying is, all karmas can give some limited result. and all limited results are included in the purnatvam the fullness he is owning up and therefore krishna karma krit he is a person of fulfillment he doesn't have regret for anything many people when they are dying they say oh i did not do this i could have done this i i should have done this this person doesn't have any regret he has got the feeling of this fulfillment mission accomplished so we can report He doesn't go to report anywhere, but figuratively speaking, he can say mission accomplished. The purna from his path. So the purpose for which human life is that that is solved by him. Therefore, Krishna Kala. Now in the next sloka, from the next sloka, Bhagwan is presenting this glory of this wise person. Because of this wisdom, what type of freedom he has? What type of attitude he has towards karma karma phala that is talked about in the next sloka yasya sarve samarambha yasya sarve samarambha kama sankalpa varjita kama sankalpa varjita jnana agni dagdha karmanam tamahu panditam budaha So here, from this shloka, nineteenth shloka onwards, there is a description of a wise person. And why wise person is described? Through the description of a wise person, there is a description of wisdom. What is the wisdom of that wise person? Because of which he is free from bondage. Because of which he is free from any sense of limitation. He or she has got the sense of fulfillment. What is that wisdom? That wisdom is given. Yasya sarve samarambha. Samarambha means all initiatives. Sarve means all, all initiatives, all actions. Kama sankalpa varjita ha are free from kama, desire. Sankalpa means fancy which leads to desire. This idea we have seen in the second chapter. Dhyaya to vishyan pum saha. संगस्तेशु पजायते संगा संजायते कावा सो व्हेन यू थिंक अबाउट द ऑब्जेक्ट यू हियर अबाउट द ऑब्जेक्ट देन दिस संगा हा संकल्पा इज बोर्न व्हाट टाइप ऑफ संकल्पा इट इज नाइस दिस नाइस हाउ नाइस इट इज लाइक यू हियर अबाउट दिस एप्पल फोन और सम कंप्यूटर और सम पर्टिकुलर टैब or some particular gadget you read the advertisement i mean the advertisement you don't have to go and see advertisement comes to your mobile <laughs> and they ask you also how was that advertisement they ask also how was that advertisement most of the time i write irrelevant <laughs> <laughs> so advertisement comes repeatedly comes and now you know there is uh, artificial intelligence and therefore they are noticing what all you are talking whatever what all communications you are making based on that they send you advertisement if you are talking to somebody about uh, say nice food eat this food was very good so many sweets were there ajira <laughs> sweet advertisement will come ha <laughs> near restaurant ha near restaurant See, this is I really like this concept behind. This is how the world is. You know what type of world is presented to you? It depends upon your karma and vasanas. 
See, this type of idea which is given in Vedanta, we were finding difficult to understand. That how according to my vasana, the world will come up. This is how, see, YouTube and all these say, these people come. According, in YouTube also, whatever type of news you are seeing, based on they will send you the news. If you see about Narendra Modi, all Narendra Modi will come. If you see about Hamas, that Hamas related, once only you see, they will come. So, this is even, we used to say this, that the whole world is presented according to your vasanas. Now, this is a practical example. How it is possible, you see. So, many advertisement you see. Out of them, one you like. This gadget is very good. Vacuum cleaner. It's a portable vacuum cleaner. <laughs> ah. Only 1000 rupees. And you can take it anywhere. You don't have to plug it now. Take it. So, how nice it is. How nice it is. So, first thought comes is, how nice it is. How nice. This is called Sankalpa. Then, second one is what? I want to buy this. That is called Kama. So now you can understand the difference between sankalpa and kama. Sankalpa means it is very nice. It will be very useful. You are not saying I want it. What do you say? It is very nice. It is very useful. We have so many problems of vacuum and the dust is there. And so it will be very useful. That is called sankalpa. Shobhana dhyasaha sankalpa. Means you superimpose some, some value in it. You Some fancy is there. Fascination. That is called Sankalpa. And that Sankalpa will not take much time to be converted into desire. Then what do you say? I want. I want this. And you will find out how to order it. And COD is there or no. COD means cash on delivery. <laughs> I am giving ideas. So COD is there or not. Because nowadays people are afraid of giving credit card and all. So, all this I want it, desire. So, this wise person is having all actions, but he does not have any sankalpa that this will make me happy. Or he does not have any desire, I want this, then only my life is successful. Then only I am fulfilled. That type of karma and sankalpas are not there. Why? Because is going to be said in the next shloka, he has discovered inner fullness. I am full and complete by myself. I do not require anything to be happy. I am happy by myself. Therefore, he does not have kama and sankalpa. Kama sankalpa varjita. And come to that person who is having all actions Without Kama and Sankalpa, to, for that person, there is a title, Panditam Budaha. Learned people call them a wise person. So, a person whose actions are free from desires and fancies, to that person, learned people call a wise person. See, it is important. That whatever title you are giving yourself, is it given by yourself or given by somebody? Somebody said, I am the best cook, Swamiji. So, who told you? Swamiji, I think so. Or somebody, my, the, the help, one who is working, his servant in my house, he or she told that you are the best cook. Why? So that you cook for him. That's why he said you are the best cook. Which is Swamiji used to say a very nice example. He said, the Swami said, I am Jagat Guru. Who told you? He said, my driver tells me that I am Jagat Guru. So, whatever title you are assuming is given by whom? That matters. Any certificate is valid when it is signed by some authority. Most of our certificates are self-signed, you know, self-authenticated. Therefore, it is said, this person is called a wise person by learned people. 
it is something like you know if somebody is this is saying rama 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 bhyam rama 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 bhyam rama bhya like that and this person who has not studied any sanskrit what will he think he is a great scholar in sanskrit <laughs> So he tells he is the best scholar in the world. It has got no value. Therefore, it is said, "Budaha tam pandita mahu." And who is this person? Nanadhi dagda karmanam. His all actions are dagda burnt by the fire of knowledge. Means all the activities apparently done by him are burnt by the fire of knowledge. What is the knowledge? i am a karta i am the non doer and therefore no action binds him it is something like in a movie the actor is killing 10 people border movie or some movie there where he has to kill all so many soldiers like this then does he have any guilt for that oh today i killed 10 people why because he has the knowledge i appear to be killing to the audience fooling the audience really i have not killed anyone kurvan api na karomi even while doing as though doing i am not really doing because of this knowledge nanagdi dagda karmana he remains free from the bondage created by action technically speaking he will not have punyam and papam for any action he does not get punyam he does not get papam generally action creates punya and papa he is ever free from punya and papa he does not have guilt also does not have hurt also so such a person he is called pandita so in this shloka the idea highlighted is the wise persons activities are free from kama and sankalpa and therefore the wise person is free from the bondage of action and his all actions are burnt by the fire of knowledge and that's wise person can have two varieties one is the wise person remaining in the setup of grihastha ashrama or a wise person remaining in sanyasa ashrama both possibilities are there and bhagwan sri krishna wants to highlight one important point which is very important to know for many seekers bhagwan wants to say that as far as the freedom is concerned ashram does not matter just because person has taken sanyasa therefore this person will be mukta free there is no guarantee just because person is in grihastha ashrama therefore he will be definitely bound that also we cannot say what makes you free or bound is not the stage of life the ashrama of brahmacharya grihastha vanaprastha sanyasa we have got this free person in all ashramas as a brahmachari also sanat kumar as free grihastha we have got janakas free sanyasi we are free vanaprastha also can be free so idea is that there is no such thing that you take particular ashrama then only you can be free most of the grihasthas who are studying vedanta have this complex that even though we are studying vedanta but it is i don't think we will get moksha moksha will get only in next life when we take sanyasa that type of complex remains in spite of studying vedanta for years together no doubt if you have got conducive situation to take sanyasa it is definitely preferable if you can take sanyasa if your wife is ready said you take sanyasa so i also will get sanyasa <laughs> <laughs> so if your wife is ready to take according to our shastra a man can take sanyasa only with the concurrence of the wife if he is not married he has to take the concurrence of parents 
that's why when i took sanyasa i went to my parents i even though in their eyes i was already sanyasi as i was a brahmach initiated brahmachari but there is a tradition so if you have got conducive situation sanyasa is more conducive for the pursuit of moksha no doubt about it if your health is okay health also should be okay health is okay your mindset is okay you are emotionally independent you don't require company if you require company better don't take sanyasa if you are you need company you better remain in grahasthashrama if you are married better remain in grahasthashrama if you don't have such emotional dependence otherwise you have to have video call with your former spouse so when you take sanyasa now you cannot say my wife what you have to say my former ex so <laughs> so you have to talk with your ex wife not not proper but if you have everything suitable for sanyasa generally some prarabdha is required particular prarabdha everybody doesn't get sanyasa so some person doesn't want sanyasa somehow we happens to be he ends up becoming sanyasi and some people want for so many years they don't get sanyasa both i have seen so it is somewhat depends on prarabdha if it is suitable sanyasa definitely has got more conduciveness in the pursuit of knowledge provided you are mature if you are not mature sanyasa is dangerous in fact you will be worse than what you were there in grahastha ashram but if you are ready sanyasa ashram is very good we, we don't deny otherwise i will be in trouble no some of you are telling grahastha also okay sanyasa also okay then why did you take sanyasa i have to answer that so i am answering if situation permits everything is conducive and you are emotionally mature then sanyasa ashram has got advantage but don't connect sanyasa with moksha that sanyasa means moksha there is no such thing and grahastha ashrama means bondage there is no such thing so bhagwan wants to highlight this point that a wise person can be a grahastha wise person can be a sanyasi what makes the wise person free is his wisdom not the ashrama remaining in the hostel also you can come first remaining at home also you can come first or not you can come first there are people who stay at home and they come first and there are some people who remain in the hostel they come first both are possible even though hostel life seems to be more conducive not a guarantee sometimes person child goes to hostel is spoiled in fact he doesn't study as much as he was studying at home therefore hostel life and the uh, the house life staying at home that is not a guarantee for first rank first rank guarantee you work hard study well similarly bhagwan wants to say moksha is not connected with grahastha ashrama or vana prasanya ashrama it is connected with wisdom so focus on wisdom not so much on ashrama that message is giving by presenting two varieties of wise people some wise people are engaged in so many activities of grahastha ashrama and some people have renounced all the activities of grahastha ashrama and both of them are free both of them are free from bondage of action that message we will see in the next class om purnamada purnamidam purnat purnamudachyate purnasya purnamadai purnameva vashishyate शांति 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 हरि ओम श्री गुरुभ्यो